Question 16. A patient's blood test indicate clinically low levels of vitamin C and D. Um, first of all, vitamin C is polar and vitamin D is non-polar. That's first of all. Um, which of the following recommendations would most effectively and safely increase a patient's blood levels of both of these vitamins? So, being vitamin C, it needs to be taken regularly because you obviously pass it through urine, urine um, commonly. And vitamin D being non-polar, it kind of comes in fatty um, stuff as well. So, let's have a look at what the options are. Take a supplement of oil containing vitamin D regularly and eat citrus fruits daily. Well, the oil is your vitamin D and your citrus fruits are your vitamin C. Daily is pretty good for that. And vitamin D regularly, uh, you don't have to take it very often, but um, we'll see what the other options are there. Eat more dairy products um, and spend one hour in the sun wearing sun protection. I don't like the idea of spending time in the sun, um, even with sun protection, not super safe. Um, dairy products are going to give you your vitamin D. Actually, both of these are going to be vitamin D. So um, you're not going to get your vitamin C from any of those. Dissolve vitamin C and D in um, a glass of water and drink it each morning. <sighs> Don't need to do that. First of all, vitamin D being non-polar, not going to dissolve either. Eat more green leafy vegetables and spend one hour a day without sun protection. Without sun protection is certainly not safe. Green leafy vegetables are going to give you a C. Um, the sun does give you a D, but without sun protection, not very good. A is your best option there. Um, oil for your D, citrus fruit for your C. Moving on. Question 17. Let's have a look. Beautiful infrared spectrum here. Um, first of all, you should know a few of these clear signs. This is an O to H or an N to H. Um, this characteristic here kind of looks like an O to H more than anything else because an N to H is normally like two fangs because it will be like a um, normally with an NH2 there. So they'll have two fangs there. But anyway, this one here is a C double bond to O there because um, it's about 1700. This kind of looks like a carboxylic acid to me, but let's have a look at what the question actually says. This organic compound produces this spectrum is an aldehyde. Uh, wouldn't have that, the OH or the NH, if it's an aldehyde. An alcohol has an alcohol here, but doesn't have that, so it's not going to be your alcohol. Your amide, um, you've got your amide is your N to C to O to H, um, like in your peptide linkage. All right, so you've got your double bond to oxygen, which is good. Um, you've got a nitrogen here, so that looks looking good there, which is good. Um, it's not an OH, so it's not a carboxyl. Um, an ester, let's have a look here. Ester wouldn't have your OH, so it's not going to be that. It's going to be your amide um, one there. You've got one main peak here, I'm guessing, because you've only got the one nitrogen to hydrogen. As I said, we'd normally have an amine group, which would have your two um, little fangs coming up here. But that's kind of where that comes from. Question 18. Ammonia can be produced by hydrogen. We've got an equilibrium reaction here. All right, if pressure and volume remain constant and temperature is increased, the forward rate, rate of reaction is collision theory. So what's gonna happen? The forward rate of reaction, if you increase temperature, is going to increase. So it's definitely not gonna be C and D because that means a decrease in um, your rate of reaction. Let's looking at this, um, the concentration. This is about yield, so it's about Le Chatelier, so that is Le Chat. And if you increase temperature, you're favoring your endothermic, which in this case is the backwards reaction, so therefore concentration will decrease because we're going backwards because it's an um, exothermic reaction, so therefore it's going to be B. There, so this one talks about rate of reaction, so obviously the rate increases, but the backwards reaction's favoured. So um, one of those ones that can be tricky here and there, but definitely increase rate of reaction because it's increasing temperature and decreasing your concentration because we're favoring the backwards reaction. Next up, question 19. In year 12 chemistry, assignment requires students to quantitatively and qualitatively compare fossil fuels and biofuels. So quantitative means numbers, and qualitative just means other stuff, for lack of better terminology, um, basically not with numbers. Which of the following investigations would most appropriately 
be pro appropriate for this comparison. Using a bomb calorimeter to determine the heat of combustion for both fossil fuels and biofuels, um, that's going to give you quantitative analysis because you're going to get numbers out of that, but you're not going to get qualitative. So it's not going to be A. Interview car owners about petrol price and make them consider nah, that's going to be your qualitative, really. Um, you're not going to get hard numbers out of that because you're just going to talk to them. Produce biofuel, biodiesel from a vegetable oil and compare the viscosity of the biodiesel produced with that of a range of fossil fuels. Um, yeah, comparing viscosity, you could probably get quantitative or qualitative. But mm, look, look, look at the next one. Find a reliable information about the environmental impacts of producing fossil fuels and biofuels. So that's going to be a qualitative where you're finding information and the amount being quantitative carbon dioxide per litre. D is going to be our option here that we all like. This one here, um, this is only going to give you one bit of information and that's going to be either quantitative or qualitative. Yeah, I think D is the best option there for that one. Question 20. The reaction below represents a discharge cycle of a standard lead battery lead acid battery, the car battery, during the recharge cycle. So the recharge is going backwards um, for this because we know this one's a discharge. So again, recharge means going backwards. I'm gonna write my arrow there. What's gonna to happen to the pH? pH is all about that. So pH um, will decrease as H positive will increase. So as we're going backwards, we're gonna make more of this hydrogen ions. So therefore pH is gonna go down. So you can cross these two off straight away. So decreases chemical energy is converted to electrical energy. That is definitely not right because we're recharging a battery where we're gonna use electrical energy and convert it into chemical energy. So D is the option there as well. Alrighty, done.